Hey guys, and today we are going to have our final tutorial match between the Nightmare and Bishop starter decks. 15 against 8, Nightmare has the first move. Nightmare decides to mulligan, and with that, both leaders are ready. Battle Shadowverse! Luna gains to 1 and ends her turn with no actions. Iris gains to 1 and draw. For one cause, she plays the Snake Priestess and ends her turn. During the end phase, because the Snake Priestess has ward, it goes into act. Luna gains to 2. For 2 cards, she plays Spartoy Sergeant. On fanfare, put the top 2 cards of your deck into your grave. 1 and 2. She ends her turn. Iris gains to 2. And stand. For 1, she plays another Snake Priestess. And then with the original one, she attacks Luna. Dropping her life to 19, turn end. And of course, with ward, the new Snake Priestess goes into act as well. Luna gains to 3. For 2 cost, she plays the Lilith. On fanfare, put a Forest Bat into your EX area. There we go. And then, for 1 cost, she can be Evolved. So paying 1, she transforms into the Evolved Lilith, a 3-3. Because Evolved followers can attack enemy followers the turn they are played, Luna commands the Evolved Lilith to attack the upper Snake Priestess. And with Lilith Strike, plus 2 to your leader's defense. So from 19 life, Luna recovers up to 21 life. Just to clarify, in Digital Shadowverse, your leader's max defense is usually 20 unless you use certain cards to increase that limit. So in the digital game, normally, you can't recover your leader's life past that limit. But in Physical Shadowverse Evolve, leaders don't have max defense values, so they can gain whatever defense your effects give. Anyways, Lilith now clashes with Snake Priestess, she takes 1 damage, the Snake Priestess takes 3 and is destroyed. Then, the Spartoy Sergeant will attack the other Snake Priestess Priestess taking one while delivering two. Turn end. Iris gains to three. First for zero cost, she plays the amulet, Hair of Illusions. And then for three, she plays the Guardian Nun. On fanfare, if any allied amulets are in play, gain one defense. And then she can be evolved for one cost. So paying one evolution point, she transforms into Evolved Guardian Nun. And when she evolves, add two to your leader's defense. So Iris 2 will gain life beyond the base of 20 to 22. Now the Evolved Guardian Nun will attack the Evolved Lilith, taking 3 while delivering 4. Lilith is destroyed. And then Snake Priestess will attack Luna directly, reducing her back to 20. Turn end, and the Guardian Nun has ward as well. Luna gains to 4. First, Spartoy Sergeant will attack the Guardian Nun with both killed in the clash. Then for 3 cost, Playful Necromancer is played. And for 1 cost, she evolves into a 4-4. Four, four. When she evolves, summon 3 Ghost. So 1, 2, and 3 Ghosts are 1-1 one, one followers with Storm that get banished during the end phase. 1 will be used to attack the Snake Priestess, destroying both. And then, the remaining 2 can attack Iris directly reducing her down to 20 life. The damage race is now equalized and with that, Luna ends her turn and the ghosts are banished. Iris gains to 4 and for 4 cost, plays the amulet Dual Flame, which on fanfare summons a Holy Flame type, a 4-4 follower with Rush. Turn end, Luna gains to 5. But unfortunately, her hand is a bit full with high cost followers. She attacks Iris directly with the playful Necromancer. And then for one cost, plays the Forest Bat from her EX area and turn end. Iris gains to 5. First, Holy Flame Tiger attacks Luna directly, once again equalizing the life. Then she activates Dual Flame's main phase skill. By acting this card, paying 2 cost and putting this into the graveyard, summon another Holy Flame Tiger. So act, paying 2. And trash, another Holy Flame Tiger pounces onto the field. Since it has rush, it immediately attacks Playful Necromancer, and both are destroyed. Next for 3, Iris plays another Guardian Nun, since there is an allied amulet plus 1 defense. And then paying an evolution point, she evolves once again. 
and on Evolve, Iris recovers back to 18 life. Turn in. During the end phase, Guardian Nun goes into act with her ward, but at this moment, Luna pays 2 cost to cast the counter spell, Razory Claw. Deal 2 damage to your leader, then choose an enemy leader or follower and deal 3 damage to it. So by paying 2 of her life, Luna chooses to inflict 3 damage to Iris directly. And with that, she gains to 6. And now, for 6 cost. Cover your necks, for the seductress of the night has come out to play. The legendary nightmare follower, Vampire Queen, enters the fray. A 5-5 and on fanfare, summon two forest bats. The horde grows. And with her continuous effect, whenever an allied forest bat comes into play, give it plus one attack and ward. The two new forest bats are now ready to protect their queen. And the previous one attacks the Guardian Nun, sacrificing itself to inflict one damage. Then, the Vampire Queen will activate her main phase effect. By acting this card and paying one of your leader's life, summon two Forest Bats. So, going to act, she takes a bite from Luna's neck, reducing her to 13 life to spawn two more bats. And of course, they also gain plus one attack and ward. With that, Luna ends her turn. And during the end phase, all the bats go into act. Iris gains to six. Both Holy Flame Tiger and the Guardian Nun will attack two forest bats. Both take two damage, but in exchange, two of the bats are taken out. Then for five cost, Angelic Sword Maiden is played. Turn end, and she too goes into act with her ward. Luna gains to seven. Oh dear, she just drew into the worst card. The worst card for Iris, that is. Paying three cost, Luna plays the Midnight Vampire. On fanfare, summon a forest bat. And then, while she is in play, all allied forest bats gain drain. And with that, the bottom forest bat attacks Guardian Nun, and both are killed. But with the forest bat's drain, Luna recovers back to 15 life. Next, the second forest bat from the previous turn attacks the Angelic Sword Maiden. It sacrifices itself to deal 2 damage, and Luna recovers to 17 with Drain. Then for 2 cost, Luna plays the Lesser Mummy, which can be evolved for 1, transforming into a 3-3, which now attacks Angelic Sword Maiden. On strike, summon a ghost, and so a 1-1 ghost is called to Luna's Field. But now the attack connects, Lesser Mummy inflicts 3 damage to the Sword Maiden, and he is defeated. And since Ghost has Storm, it immediately attacks the Angelic Sword Maiden, sacrificing itself to finish off her final 1 defense. Now Luna will once again make use of Vampire Queen's effect, suspending her and paying 1 life to spawn 2 more Forest Bats with 2-1 and Ward. Ending her turn, all 3 bats go into Act. Iris gains to 7. First, the Holy Flame Tiger will sacrifice itself to get rid of one of the Forest Bats. Luna doesn't recover any life at this moment because the life gained from Drain only triggers when the follower with Drain is the one attack. Then for 4 costs, she plays the Cruel Priestess. On fanfare, choose an amulet that costs 5 or less from your grave and put it into play. So with that, Dual Flames will be resurrected and with its fanfare, another Tiger is spawned. Then with Dual Flames main effect, act, paying 2, and putting it into the grave, a second tiger descends. And with their rush, both of them will attack the remaining two forest bats, taking two damage each, but finally eliminating the nightmare horde. Turn end. Luna gains to eight. First for six costs, she plays the Undead King. On fanfare, choose up to two followers in your grave and add them to your hand. Luna chooses to recycle only the Sparse Hoy Sergeant and plays it for two cost. And with its fanfare, another two cards are milled from the top of the deck. Now, since Iris no longer has any followers with Ward on the field, both Vampire Queen and Midnight Vampire will attack, aiming for Iris, dealing a total of seven damage. And with that, Luna now has lethal on the next turn. Turn end, Iris gains 2 eights. First, she triggers the main effect of Hair of Illusions. By acting this card and putting it into your grave, choose an enemy follower and act it. The target chosen is Undead King. Now the two Holy Flame Tigers will launch sacrificial attacks, one aiming for the Vampire Queen and one aiming for the Undead King. Both are lost. Then the Cruel Priestess will finish the job, sacrificing herself 
to kill the undead king. Now for four cost, Iris will play another copy of Dual Flame, producing another tiger. And with its rush, it attacks and takes down the Midnight Vampire. Then for three cost, she plays the amulet Death Sentence, which comes into play in the act state. And finally, with her remaining 1 points, she casts Angelic Snipe to deal 2 damage to the Vampire Queen, finally eliminating her. Turn end. Luna gains to 9. Now that her graveyard is charged with 11 cards, the time has come. She pays 7 to call forth the son of Dracula, Alucard. On fanfare, Necro charge 10, gain 2 defense. And with Storm, it can attack immediately, aiming for Iris. With its strike, choose an enemy follower, deal 4 damage to it, and add 4 to your leader's defense. With that, the Holy Flame Tiger's life force will be drained, and Luna recovers all the way up to 20. Could this be a perfect win for the Nightmare deck? Now the attack connects, and Alucard sinks his teeth into Iris's neck. And Sportsoy Sergeant will follow up with an attack as well. Turn end. Iris gains to 9. First, she uses the main phase effects of Death Sentence. By acting this card and putting it into your grave, choose and destroy an enemy follower. So with that, Alucard is killed. Then with Dual Flame's main phase effect, act, paying 2, and grave for another Holy Tiger. With Rush, it immediately attacks and destroys the Spartoy Sergeant. Then for 2 cost, Iris plays the amulet, Beastly Vow. Just like Death Sentence, it comes into play, act. Then, she ends her turn. Luna gains to 10. And paying 7, she calls for her second copy of Alucard. Once again on fanfare, plus 2 defense. And he attacks Iris with Storm. With his strike, Holy Flame Tiger is once again eliminated, and Luna recovers to 24 defense. If this attack connects, it will all be over. But at this very moment, Iris will pay for to cast a quick Acolyte's Light. Choose an enemy follower, banish it, and add two to your leader's defense. So in the middle of his attack, Alucard is sent beyond the game, and Iris recovers, thankfully, to four. Luna pays her last three points to play the playful Necromancer and turn end. Iris gains to ten, but she has no cards in her hand. First, for 3 cost, she plays her final copy of the Guardian Nut. With her fanfare, since there's an allied amulet in play, plus 1 defense. And for 1 cost, she will evolve into a 4-5. And when evolves, Iris further recovers to 6 life. Now with Beastly Vow's main face effects, you may act this card, pay 1 cost and put it into the grave. So paying 1, another Holy Flame Tiger emerges. But none of her followers can attack this turn, so turn end, and during the end phase, Guardian Nun goes into act with Ward. Luna recovers to 10. First, with one cost, she evolves the playful Necromancer into a 4-4. And when evolves, three ghosts spawn. And since they have Storm, the playful Necromancer and one of the ghosts will launch a combined attack on the Guardian Nun. Inflicting a total of 5 damage, all three are destroyed. Now that the coast is clear, the remaining two ghosts attack Iris directly. And then for six, the Vampire Queen returns to the field. And with her fanfare, here come two Forest Bats. Luna's field is now at maximum capacity, so she ends her turn. During the end phase, the ghosts are banished, and the two Forest Bats go into act with their ward. Iris recovers to ten and bats everything on this final draw. For 2 cost, she plays the Ardent Nut, which can now be evolved for 1 cost, transforming into a 3-3. Now, the Holy Flame Tiger and Guardian Nun will attack the two Forest Bats, each taking 2 damage, but managing to eliminate the Horde. Turn, end. Luna recovers to 10. And then, paying 3 cost, she casts the spell Night Horde. Summon two Forest Bats, then choose an enemy follower and deal X damage to it equal to the number of allied Forest Bats you have in play. So first, two Bats spawn, and since there are two, two damage can now be inflicted to one enemy follower. And of course the target chosen is the Ardent Nun with Ward. She falls. And with that, Iris no longer has any defenses on her field, the Vampire Queen attacks. And with her Crimson Fangs, Iris will bleed out to zero. 
So the match is over, and the winner is the Nightmare deck with 24 life remaining. So I am not going to extend today's match because I think it is going to be extremely difficult for Bishop to launch a comeback from here. But anyways, this was our third and final tutorial match for the Shadowverse Evolve start decks. I hope you guys enjoyed them and now have a better idea of how each start deck and class plays. Now that we all have a better idea of how physical Shadowverse works, tomorrow I'm going to finally open a box of the very first booster. So look forward to it and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's Shadowverse video.